Hey, friends. So, I did a post yesterday, if you happened to catch it, or even if you didn't. Um, a kind of a significant one. Of, I, I, I had, to quickly summarize, I had had a session with our my therapist, our couples therapist, and he offered some insight about how I deliver what I'm communicating. And in this case, he was talking about the way I was talking to my partner, but it immediately resonated for me on a lot of different levels, including the creative professional level. And it, if you watch my post from yesterday, you'll see how I kind of, how that sort of took me to a place where I recognized that there's a certain craving recently to actually narrow down where my focus is, actually kind of get really one pointed. And I, I, I spoke about why I have had some difficulty doing that in my life. And, and I also speak about, spoke about my observation that I'm not the only one who suffers from this conundrum of a kind of unwillingness or inability to choose a, a path and then really go down that path. And, uh, but every time I get, every time that that arises for me as something significant, every time that the, 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 the necessity of that choice or the, the, the feeling that that choice is an important one to make, every time that arises as a thing in my life, I find myself you know, I find myself coming back to music. And It was really interesting for me to for me to watch myself in my work with students in my own creative musical exploration development I remember going to see a concert in Chicago not too long ago, back in, I guess it was probably October. And I saw a student, I saw a, a performer who had been a student of the same teacher as me when I was studying piano as a, in my early twenties, this, this kid was a child prodigy. He was six years old at the time and already is just a remarkable talent. And and I and I found myself just completely drawn in by music. And I remember thinking you know, at the time I was also kind of still wrestling with my, my wrist injury and being unsure of what that was about. 
I don't know that I'd even seen the doctor yet. I don't know that I'd gotten my diagnosis. But I just remember thinking, committing to music is a choice I've kind of already made. Feels like this choice. I think there's a kind of, I don't know what to call it, bargaining with the choice, maybe. But But ultimately, I don't even know that it is a choice. It may just be who I am. And and I think as I arrived at this place yesterday and I felt myself I felt myself seeing a particular conundrum I very quickly I very quickly came from that after after doing my video post yesterday, I very quickly came to a place where I was like, well, but is this really a conundrum? Is this really a question even? There's a, I think there is a kind of bartering, you know, there's a great Puffy's poem. I'm not gonna get I don't even know that I can paraphrase it adequately, but he talks about all of your stress, all of your anxiety is God is trying to sell you something and you don't want to buy. And, and then it's like, this is what your, this is what your discomfort is. Your constant haggling over the price. <laughs> As you know, in other words, there's this treasure that the universe is trying to extend to us, that the universe is trying to de desperately to deliver to our heart and soul. But the cost is giving up some of our attachments, giving up ultimately our identity, our sense, our attachment to our identity. That's the price. And if we haggle, if, if we if we sort of try to negotiate that price, in other words, I'll pay this much of my identity, but I won't pay any more than that. I'll give up this much of my ego's attachments, but this much? I don't know, maybe, maybe we'll just, you know, maybe it's not worth it. Maybe this treasure is not worth it. And that's the same conundrum, the same, uh, what's the word? It's the same trap that I was talking about yesterday, where if you survey all these different paths of opportunity, each one of them in, in, in its potential, in the state of potential, is going to promise 
infinite reward, or at least overwhelming, highly abundant reward. And each one genuinely does offer that. It's just that once we choose one, we forego all the other ones. Now we're going this way. And all of a sudden going this way, now we start to really kind of evaluate that outcome, evaluate that treasure and weigh it up against the challenges we're facing. And the fact that we, from standing back and regarding it in its potential, all we really could see was the, um, this sort of perfect outcome. But once we're actually committed to it, or, or, or especially when we're not fully committed to it, but we're deciding whether or not to commit to it, it's easy to start going, well, then we, that's when we start the haggling. So when we start haggling with God over the price. And the phrase came to me this morning called, where it was like, it's, this is the fallacy or the fantasy of potential. The fantasy of potential. In, in its potential, every path is unspeakably rewarding, just beyond words, rewarding. So it's tempting to, to, to not commit to any of them and to, and to sort of vicariously experience that reward without actually ever seizing it. And the, that's obviously a recipe for disaster. It's a recipe to ultimately grasp nothing in the end. But the reason it's attractive is that we can sort of experience the rush of what it would be like to, to receive that culminating reward, that culminating outcome, without doing any of the work, without actually, and, and most importantly, without foregoing any of the other amazingly rewarding possible experiences we could have. It's the fantasy of potential and getting stuck in the fantasy of potential is uh, it's like a hall of mirrors it's a it's a everywhere you look it's something is looks interesting and beautiful and amazing but we're not going anywhere So I, in some ways, I'm just kind of re-diagnosing myself from, from yesterday, but I'm keeping this, I'm keeping this experience, I'm keeping this conundrum really kind of front and center for myself because I think it's important that I don't allow myself to slip back into a kind of fuzzy awareness of this. It's important to stay on the ball and recognize, A, if I'm slipping into that kind of state of living in the fantasy of potential, stop doing that. Just being be aware to, that I'm doing that. And then, B, am I already halfway down a path and I'm just pretending like I'm not? Have I never selected a path, but I'm desperate to do so? What is the actual desired outcome that's worth giving up everything else? Because what we'll find is if we take the question that seriously, what is actually important enough that we would give up everything else? There aren't that many things. Most of those paths that offer the abundant, beautiful, amazing reward, we, we can see through the fallacy 
fallacy slash fantasy of, poten of, of potential. We, because we go, yeah, that is a beautiful reward for somebody for whom that's the biggest, the most important thing in their life. But that's not me. For me, it's this. This matters. And it's nice to hear myself say that. It's nice to hear myself know that I know that and, f and phrase it that way. Because it means I'm not actually that confused. If anybody else has experienced this thing, this fantasy of potential, and if you, if you want to know a little bit more about and I've, I've kind of gone back into some of the same stuff I said yesterday, but I go into it in more detail in my post from yesterday, which is called My Fundamental Conundrum. Check it out. If you resonate with this at all, or if this is something you've experienced, let me know. Because I think it's, I know I'm not the only person to kind of have this issue, but um, but it's not something that I often talk about. That, that I, It's not something I have a lot of people that I can talk about it with. It's a particular kind of experience. So I'm always curious to see if there are any other people out there <laughs> wrestling with the same things. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you. Hope to see you soon. Have a great day.